Welcome Spartans to Halo TV Plus, part of Evolved, your home for Halo. I'm your host, Oren, and on Halo TV Plus, my guests and I recap Halo's original TV show, Halo the Series, and we discuss its contents and unique canon within its own silver timeline. Joining me this evening for Episode 1, Contact, is Nick Castillo. Welcome to the show. Uh, you know, I've already in the show before, but thank you. Thank you for having me back. Appreciate it. Well, Wait, I'm... I wasn't in the show before. That was a trailer. That was like a that was like a little teaser for our listeners. It, it kind of wasn't really a, a little real episode. Tease, you know, taking off kind of some a, clothing or it was armor kind of a preview. Or <laughs> oh man, sorry, what's up? Oh my goodness, you need to fix that cough, sir. Uh, now here on Halo TV Plus, each week we produce two accompanying podcast episodes for the week's Halo the Series episode, a commentary and an analysis. This episode is a commentary. In a moment, Nick and I will watch Contact and discuss the events as they unfold on screen. We encourage you, the listener, to watch along with us. I'll tell you when to press play very soon. Take a moment to queue up the episode while I get through some housekeeping. If you're new to the show, welcome. Halo TV Plus is part of Evolve that hosts all of uh, other Halo shows. Podcast Evolved, Mission Debrief, Builds with Blocks, Halo Book Club, and Halo Headlines. Evolve also partners with HCS Pro Talk, a podcast where Josh and Will discuss the latest information within the competitive Halo scene with an emphasis on community each week. You can learn more about each show on our website, evolvedhalo.com. As we are a new show, we ask that you rate us and leave us a review. We greatly appreciate all of the feedback we receive from our listeners to improve the quality of our shows. We would like to take this moment to thank all of our patrons for their continued support. Thank you guys so, so much. Our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, access to our podcast soundtrack, and more. You can head over to patreon.com slash podcast evolved to learn more. Now, Nick, how did you first see this episode? It was very unique. How did I first see it? Yes. How did we experience this a few days yeah, pretty ago? Pretty cool. So when you're born, um, your body forms out and forms these different appendages and things. And I was fortunate to have two of these eyes that allow me to uh, view things with them. So, yeah. Okay. Go on. All right. So the whole universe about- is in a hot, dense state. <laughs> Near, no. All so, right. Uh, where was your physical being two and a half days ago? All Earth, right. Milky Way Galaxy. Uh, no. So we went to a place in New York called Alamo, if I'm correct. Which the Alamo Draft House. Usually think of Texas when you think of Alamo. Could be. I was wrong. Um, we went to the Alamo Draft House and we, uh, on this like second or third lower level of this building we entered in, we were able to stand in line and get ready and like. Just, you know, mentally prepare ourselves for the event that was going to be Halo. Uh, it was pretty cool. Yes. It was amazing. I hope we're able to see more episodes in the theater. I hope they replay these. We got to see the first two episodes. We're only going to talk about the first one in this episode since the second episode technically hasn't premiered yet. But uh, I, I really hope that viewers of the halo tv series and just fans of halo that want to experience these episodes on the big screen get the opportunity to do so so thank you to collider for partnering with alamo draft house and with paramount plus to put this on and uh yeah it was it was a great experience for for nick and i and since then i've watched the episode i've rewatched the episode on on my home tv have you rewatched it before this this viewing? I was able to rewatch some of it. I unfortunately had work after coming back home, but I was able to get through some of the beginning again, which is honestly probably some of my favorite moments. But that's just me, at least. Yeah, no, I think the opening has definitely uh, resonated with a lot of viewers. So, and, and we'll definitely get into that. Yeah, I, um, just, I still can't believe the chief dies in the first like five minutes. It's oh my goodness. You're crazy. Well, uh, speaking of Chief dying but not dying, of course, this is spoilers. We're going to be watching the episode while talking about it. So if this is your first viewing of it, I think that'll be very interesting that you're going to be experiencing this while listening to us. So I do recommend 
that if you haven't seen the episode, to go watch it first, and then as a repeat viewing, you can re-watch it while listening to this episode. But of course, you could do whatever you like. The synopsis for Contact, the first episode, is as follows. In the year of 2552, humans on the planet Madrigal have been fighting for independence from Earth, but a fatal encounter with the Alien Covenant complicates things. Master Chief John 117 and his super soldier Spartans join the fight. After the battle, Master Chief heads to his home planet of Reach with a magical survivor and a mysterious object he discovered on the planet. But a controversial order has John questioning his mission and himself. This episode's director was Otto Bathurst. It is 58 and 56 seconds, and the original air date was March 24th. Nick, are you ready to watch the episode? I'm born ready to watch the episode. That's what I like to hear. If you haven't queued it up to 000, pause our episode now. I will count us down from five, and I will say play, and that's when everyone should hit the play button, and it'll be synced up to as best as we can, because that's, that's what I can do. Uh, so let's get into it. Five... Four, three, two, one, play. All right. Paramount Plus Original. So this That's logo, you... I had a couple problems. Let's pause it here. <laughs> <laughs> We're not pausing. We're not pausing. Um, but, uh, but yeah. I guess while we're getting these introductory shots, Nick, how would you over, overall reactions to this episode? Uh, I see. I feel like I don't want to like give it away or spoil it because they do such good jobs of setting it up, and I didn't expect where we were going to go. Or at least uh, I know our viewpoints, as we've kind of talked in in a different part. Uh, you're very much into Halo. You brought me into Halo. Uh, the lore I'm still always fuzzy on. I mean, I know who's on whose side generally, at least, but it's it's a it's a great introduction. It's great. I, I would echo the same. Like I feel like this episode does a nice job introducing you to the the setting, into the conflict, and then the major players for this episode. Yeah, you, we get we get the the full cast or the majority of the cast. We get a little bit of who they are, what they're doing, and it for me anyway is a great setup. I feel like this is a, a very strong episode with an even amazing uh, opening. And and it just really kicks kicks things off. So I'm I'm a big fan, and we'll kind of dive a little bit more into specific scenes um, in our analysis episode. Um, right now, I, I I like what this scene does. I think it doesn't quite land, but it it's Agreed. here to kind of it here to set you with the conflict of of insurrectionists versus uh, the UNSC. Right. Madrigal yep. is a colony world in the outer colonies, very distant from what's considered the inner colonies, which are the colonies closer closer to Earth. Outer mm-hmm. colonies are just farther away because, of course, humanity started from Earth. And these, these, this is a mining planet. They, they mine hydrogen and they don't want to be controlled by the UNSC and the United Earth government. They just want to live their own life and play cards. And so they they talk about this, and we get that introduction, and they also talk about the Spartans, and paint a very gruesome picture of what they're capable of, um, comparing them to the Marines. You know, I think they said what a hundred Marines to one Spartan. They're they're a killing machine, and they basically just keep on killing until there's nothing left to kill, which I think is, I don't know, it, it, it it's accurate. But it, I think it's great because it contrasts it right next to the Covenant as they show up and literally do the same thing um, and just completely annihilate these people. But uh, I don't know if you want to touch on anything else. We get we get our, our leader here, Jin Ha, who's Yearns, Yearn, no, Yearns, her actress's name, who is a Quan. That's her name. Quan Ha's father. And uh, yeah. I think we all like a bunch of people talked about it probably in uh, in just in general, like not even just anyone who saw this is like the first trailers for seeing the weapons that they have. We sort of get to see them a little bit. And I know we're used to like huge and sci-fi, but that we're seeing like AKs 
and different ones like that. It's interesting to see that, like, even though society has come far in advance in this world, it shows the difference in the, like, insurrections, in the, uh, the insurrectionists, the people that are not part of, uh, I guess we would say the Alliance. Um, this is, again, me talking from not good halo <laughs> terms so if i say anything the, wrong get me in the yeah, comments yeah well so great. so they're so you know magical wants to be separate from the ueg which is the united earth government gotcha. and so their their resources and their supplies are lower tech makeshift kind of do your own you know diy uh sort of resources um, yeah, and so they, i want to live my own life basically their life yeah and they... exactly and so they, okay. they don't have the the endless amounts of money and the latest high tech from the UNSC or those colonies that are part of the UEG. So that's so yes, that is a good point. And I, and I have an, a point to make on just kind of how their weapons contrast when fighting the elites versus when the Spartans show up and they use yeah. their future ARs that are able to tear through the armor much more quickly. And I think that's that's another contrast that the show is trying to make. With yes, these are old guns by you know modern standards because this is 500 years into the future, uh, but they they still function and these guys live off of it. Crazy um, thing for this opening, uh, the place we went gave us those drugs to have. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of blacked out on the second half of the episode, but you know it's great. No, <laughs> yeah, nothing like tromping through the woods for some drugs to then get ambushed by an alien race. Wow, or hasn't even happened yet. You're already spoiling it. Hey, you you started talking about the ARs, which we I guess we technically have seen on. The yeah, shoulders. we saw it. How dare you? Oh Wait, no, this gosh. movie is completely fighting free. No fighting ever happens. They all talk it out, shake they hands of, diplomatically. Yeah. So of course this is this is Quan Ha that we're seeing here running through the woods with this really cool drone shot that's that's flying through the woods and and over everybody. Um, she's one of our lead characters and, um, I just want to say that like her acting through this whole sequence, I think is amazing. Um, yep. you can, you can feel the terror in her, in her voice and the, in her expressions and all splash that. splash zone that just happened. And Oof. like, like, oh, like her face there is just so great. But yeah, so then we get to this, oh shit moment. So like, I remember in the theater, like watching this and like, like that first hit that just happened. <laughs> And it's like gone. that leg, like she's just gone. <laughs> she, uh, deleted, like completely eliminated. Like the plasma weapon portrayal is probably the one of the most uh, brutal, accurate yeah. depictions of like the Halo lore in this episode. Like, like in the Cole Protocol, the I think Captain Keys actually uses I think a plasma rifle on an insurrectionist, and he like he like has so much remorse for it because of just how brutal it is against just flesh like these weapons are just so powerful it just completely obliterates our uh you know you know human organic you know our and we're here contrasting the difference of all their weapons that they have now compared to which in simpleness looks like it was just a pistol of theirs like a pistol did all of that damage so all right, our, our, yeah. we have ars though and machine guns about to come out don't worry we'll be good it's like oh jeez also, this is quite a run that that that's quite Juan a jump, runs. dog. Well, that's quite a jump, but like, like that facility is so like she probably sprints like, oh maybe a mile like or something like going that. up those stairs right there. I would have been out of breath, and Quan's running across the desert. Like that's <laughs> that's it, dude. I would have I would have been dying at the top of the staircase. <gasps> it would have been interesting to see the Covenant's like actual <laughs> Mission approach. Sorry, go <laughs> actual approach to uh. Because it's just a giant like field, and they didn't fly over. They obviously walked because their ship stays back there when we when we go back there later. So there is one gripe I do actually have, and I actually wrote it down yesterday in watching this, and All right. I have to wait for a little later with the scene. But we do have the machine gun there; it's pretty awesome, and that's what I'll it might come be, back with. It might be a similar gripe that I have, or just a a thing, because like what, what you get this you get this front line right. You see yes. that guy in the background behind her with the with the gun and uh everyone else is their guns and we'll see in a moment when oh there's our tahoe uh you'll see in a moment when they when the covenant just completely blows through the doors like yeah they shoot at they shoot at the shields and the shields absorb all of the bullets yeah all of them like they're they're completely ineffective the uh, the insurrectionists and their 
and what they have equipped for this. But they do have two oh, mini guns. Two machine guns. Oh my gosh! Have now I have more of a Christ. <laughs> but uh, has doubled. Yeah, I feel like. I'll, I'll let you say it since you you have have the gripe, but no, you it's okay. It, it's you you okay. want to save it or you want to say it right now? Uh, it's your call. I think let's wait because I want to. I want to. I want them to like. You gotta have to like fully see like what happens in that, and the later on. All of, right. of, like the well, we'll just we'll just say make note of how much damage they're doing now with with inferior how many weapons. Rounds get pumped in, yeah. Plus two machine to two mini guns, but um. Uh, I guess while we're looking at that in the shields, you can see those those shielding effects here, and uh, and overall design of the elites. Um, you know, the elites have changed over the years in the games, um, with their kind of major contrast between Halo Three and Halo Four, and then it, we get back to kind of a more classic it's Halo <laughs> uh, elite style back in Halo Infinite. These yeah, guys back are. In the- <laughs> What? You ever back you... in the day used to get an eighth grader and your kindergartner buddies when you were in grade school? This is like if you were guy your eighth grader and kindergartner buddy and you were forced to play dodgeball against them. <laughs> it's just like a massacre. It lit- like it's oh gosh, it's so terrible. It just oh. they just they're just walking and they're, they're they are cannon fodder, like the humans. Yeah. To to these elites. So we we just saw he used at least like two to three seconds of two mini guns spraying on four entry Spartans, uh, or el- elites, el- elites. No, yeah, sorry, <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> I swear I know better names. I just suck with names every now and then. I will say also something else I forgot to say is when we saw the elite running in the beginning, I was a little worried they were going to look a little too corny. In the animation, and then we got to here, and I'm like, "Cool, looks fantastic." I I like them. I like I, the motion I think... blur when the one ran just in the very beginning. I was like, "Oh, did we not like fully render that guy in, or something like that, or edit him with shading?" But now here, like, beautiful, reflective surfaces, everything of the sand around catching on them. Yeah, I mean, I don't. It's it's not it's not like major blockbuster visual effects level, but I mean, like, even this shot here of them, you know brutally killing all the kids like yeah but like i believe that was a real some yeah you get some good close-ups and and the 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 visual effects are are very believable i think they 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 put in the resources to to kind of achieve some see now rendering see what he used there a second ago that guy used the m203 grenade launcher on his thing our guys have been firing a bunch here (laughs) that's an but I think we should uh, just take a moment in silence for our Lord and Savior entering here. Boom. No, he picked a good landing zone. He's just got to find some good loot like an apex. Yep. Uh, <laughs> he's going to... Well, he heard the gunfire, so he's here to third party. Ah, uh, gosh. That, yeah, that makes sense. I'm not overly fond of this jump. Um, but... I don't know. I guess Spartans can jump that high. Hey man, it just looks a, it just looked a little silly. I mean, part but I think kind of wanted. Oh, go we ahead. talked. I think the beginning part is a little bit of a fan service to how like it may feel silly at times, but I feel like like looking first person through the chief was like doing the fan service to the people who played the game. And you'll hear yeah, some no, things I, every I think, now and then. I think it's good. Like I like the grenade like throw he had. I I like the first person sort of visor uh sequences i mean they're brief i don't think they're distracting i like the melee that he had knocked him over freaking yeah the fight the fighting is i felt so bad here (laughs) let's fly (laughs) yeah i'll come to (laughs) (laughs) oh poor guy so this is nice. We get to have like a, a moment with each of the three Spartans in addition to Chief. And so you have Vinok here improvising with this giant pole. And that was is... not a sharp pole, too. So that guy like really shoved it in there, my dog. And just freaking tosses him away. Uh, 
So that's another good example. You see, you see an elite getting shot at by a machine gun from an insurrectionist, and then Vanak comes in with his DMR, places some rounds, and gets. And rid now of you the can shields. tell me like the bullets actually are firing faster still, or something like that. Like, but like also this is great. I was really hoping in this second. I told Oren in the theater afterwards, like, are we gonna we're we gonna noob combo someone? But I was like, oh no, we're just gonna melt his face straight off. Still, still great, still great. It's yes, but that would have been pretty cool if she she did the noob combo and then, up, she bring, it, she and then brings, she brings she charged up and then yeah brings her pistol over that that would have been pretty cool. That was uh, that was Riz with the, uh, with the with the communications tech pack on her back. You think? I, I kind of like that addition to. Uh, to yeah, I remember we talked. Yeah, I like her the the outfit of Riz the best. Like her her Spartan uniform. And then the sniper, this is Kai. For the record, when Orin and I would play Halo, I was a sniper. I used that to be good. Is, now I'm complete is, garbage. Well, you gotta play more <laughs> Halo. You gotta play more Infinite, you know? Like, what can I tell you? I just need to watch John's steps and understand. I do like that they also kind of captured the inaccuracy with the, uh, with the rifle, with the, uh, with plasma. the plasma rifle, yeah, yeah, because it kind of. That's how I feel the, the, when I was shooting it far away. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where we're gonna see. Well, first off, fan service a little bit again. But oh yeah, this, so this I like this, but laughed. I kind of like it's corny because, and I think this is a good example of like something that doesn't quite work in the TV show, but of course it works in the game. You have Chief jump behind cover. You get the sounds of the like you need the audio um, like cues in the game, so mm-hmm. then the player knows. And here it's just kind of silly, here but I like the it. Moment that I wanted to talk about is one, two, three. Like no more than a second, like a half a second. It was like three bullets, and then it took that elite down. Now, if you want to say Chief took their shields down beforehand with the AR, I can give that to you. Okay, but like. That was like like the, the, some of the interesting interact the freedom fighters. I'm gonna say could have done that. I like, I agree. I feel like they're they're I I think they should have like thrown a grenade. Like maybe the first guy dropped to the to the minigun, and then they threw a grenade to kind of get rid of those like immediately. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like you want to also show how inferior the insurrectionists are and how much better the Spartans are. So, yes, yes, yes. You know, you so they kinda... don't even know how to fight that well. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I was hoping. I don't know. The other thing is, I was hoping he would have fired the M203, like right before he gets too close, so it like looks like it blows up around him, and then the elite keeps coming through or activates the sword and comes through the smoke of the of the grenade. That would have been some crazy stuff. Another thing to note is that like this this elite, the red elite, like he didn't have any shields on, and he was still. Yeah, like coming at him, and and he was shooting the AK at him, and he like even he like held up his arm in defense a little bit, and you can see like the bullets going into his arm, and it it still didn't really, it wasn't effective at all. So, I'm gonna guess that's just the A. Their guns are so much better. I'll just guess and take. Well, that's what it is. I mean, they they're like high high caliber velocity. Like, I mean, I don't know the, the full lore into what it's all, but like. It's it's Halo sci-fi weapons, not you know five hundred year old AK forty seven with mm-hmm. standard kinetic bullets. Oh, that's right. I forgot even what year we're in of how old this gun is. Probably now. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed in Jin Ha's death. Like, I feel like it could have been. I I feel like it would have been better if uh, Chief was trying to save Jin, but like arrived too late and then. He still died. Isn't that what just happened, though? Oh, no, you want... because like oh, because like, he didn't have any focus on the elite basically. First, Chief didn't saying. realize that Elite was there until after he kills him, and it's just gotcha. like, eh, okay, whatever. Like, there's four Spartans there, all with motion trackers. Like, you think at least one of them would recognize another Elite still standing, and and they could have easily still just gotten just not gotten there in time, but for whatever reason. So, and that's that's our opening. That's the opening. What like six minutes or something, or however, however long it is. I don't want to pause it and see, but I'll but, hover uh, over. That was the opening. Oh my god, that was eighteen yeah. minutes. Oh wow! 
Jeez. So that, that's a hell of a teaser. But overall, still a great intro. Like, it had to be, I agree. be me watching it a second time to, to be like, oh, I have a little bit of a gripe with it. But still, like, still great overall. There's, I would say they're just kind of like, they're like movie Nitpicky. inconsistencies where it's it's just like, yeah, okay, you can you can nitpick and kind of figure out what it is. But, like, as a whole, the filmmakers are, you know, the showrunners are trying to convey a certain thing. And I feel like for the most part, it was it was very effective. And they really captured just the brutality of the Covenant and of these elites. You know, you know, I just realized is we see also shield layering on the uh, the Covenant, but no shield layering on the chief in that fight. Like the sound well, effect saw, only happened. You saw no, you saw shield layering um, in that scene where like when his shields drop and he jumps off that like. Bunker. Oh, the regen. There's, I didn't see me. There's okay. some. Oh no, no, no! Before the regen, you can see some of his shielding flickering. There's oh, like that's gold, right. That's right. There's like a gold shimmer to it. Okay, I take so it back. They, now. they touch it. They touch Don't it. Don't get at me there. in the comments. Yeah. Reddit's gonna eat so. my butt, dude. Yeah. See, look how far this is. Like, that's not a close distance. Like. But also, other thing we talked about. We'll see also more in a little bit. Beautiful wide shots, dude. Beautiful establishing yes. shots. Yes. I'm sorry. They, they didn't yeah, see the, that. The, they didn't see that. The they didn't see. They had to look. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like the walk up. Like, oh, hey. Wait, chief. look up there. Oh, look. I missed that. <laughs> There's the phantom. <laughs> I like this moment. The like, you know, classic. Let me take my AI, my AI gun away. So I have the better gun. Like, yeah, I laughed at moment. that part very often. I also, also watching this a second time, I'm like, okay, so there's four of you, and you're gonna take the sniper into the underground close quarters cave. Yeah, and like the M16 not... or the <laughs> like, M14. I have this giant sniper rifle. Let me go into this cave. <laughs> like, uh, you don't want to hey, take. Dude, have one you of the seen me guys? no scope, dude? She's got this. You know, I bet you she could no scope the shit out of someone. But, eh, I digress. Here we get some of the Forerunner architecture, I guess. It's not It's not full hard light. Oh, here's another POV shot. Like, that POV shot felt natural. I liked that one a lot. But I still like the other one. I thought that one was fine. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, the other ones felt more like, a, oh my god, I want to see what it's like and not necessary, but still cool. This one felt, I think, just because of how the camera moved into it, felt more natural. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. You're saying the, the first one was a little bit more abrupt. Yeah, but I still wanted it and liked it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, my first instinct wasn't, why the why the F did I go first person? It's like, oh my god, I'm first person like playing Halo. A little sussy baka in the corner. So I've heard some some people talking that they they think that this elite uh, is the arbiter Thel Vadam. That's the one from, that joins uh, him in other games, right? Yeah, in Halo Three they they team up, and in Halo Two he's kind of tranching around doing his own thing. I I don't know if that's confirmed. I think that's just speculation yeah that's but it'd right. be it'd be interesting if this person eventually becomes the arbiter though um but you know we'll wait to see i do like the when he does the cloaking in a second like they they have that sound effects of him activating the cloaking device and it's only active for a short period of time and then it goes away get some flashbacks of young john with a white wolf White Wolf. Is this Game famously of Thrones? Famously known in uh, Game of Thrones. So this is a crossover, obviously. Well, Commander Shepard's in here. So it's a, there's a Mass Effect crossover. Whoa. Also, that he waits till after to use <laughs> the invis. Let me run across regular first. Well, and he then has... Run. Well, he has a timer, you know, so he has oh, to... Oh, of course, you know, of course. You have to go around the corner, do it like that, so then now you Hit can't like see Hit like a him. truck, dude. Bro. Also, I do, but I do find it weird that, like, oh, there's just a banshee over there that he's just gonna go, wee. Yeah, dude, Bye. It spawned. That's why he did it. It spawned in at that <laughs> it time. It spawned. <laughs> I 
I should have turned the subtitles on. So That's what I did. Going on. <laughs> I'm, af- I'm afraid that the... Uh, I'm afraid to mess with it and possibly pause it, but whatever. Um, we get we get the silver team insignia on their breastplate. Pretty those cool. Those are just numbers, dude. It says one one seven. What are you talking about? No, on the other side, you dingus. On his back side, I can't see his back. Oh my goodness! She's just sleeping like Batman. Batman when he attacks his victims, just puts them to sleep. <laughs> just puts them to sleep. They're sleeping. Like my fishes. I think this is one of my first, the first beautiful, yes, beautiful wide reach. establishing shot. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it looks great. It's a, it's a cool rendition of a city. There's my it's, girl. Uh, I, I, in one of the mission debriefs, they were, or um, not mission debrief. That's our show. Uh, in the silver debriefs, they were talking Evolved. about. I missed it. Did I miss it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> In the blog post, they were talking about the architecture for Fleetcom and how they took it from kind of dystopian uh, tower structures and and what is in the new Alexandria mission of Halo Reach, the game. And I feel like they did a good a good job, the art direction and kind of constructing that that city. Yeah, it looks really good. So here we have uh, we have Dr. Halsey, who we just looked at, and then we have Admiral Parangoski coming in here for our first character tension moment. But uh, I I was when I was watching this a second time, I was like, man, Dr. Halsey's lab is like empty, like yeah. it's not like cluttered with shit. Like I feel like. I don't know. Maybe Do you think it's just maybe not what she's I. She's like Tony Stark, and that like it projects everywhere, and she just writes everywhere, and it goes away. But even Tony Stark has like clutter, you know, yeah, like, like maybe nuts and bolts hanging around like, different pieces. Yeah, he he still like works with his hands and stuff. Like this is like obviously a set and like a pristine environment. Like there's no like she has like a journal in the comic or not the comics, but in in the lore, like she I don't know. Like I feel like you need to have a desk with just shit everywhere like just have junk in the corner just like have, i feel like, like you need yeah you need something like it's literally Huge just tubes a tablet of water filtering through places you know what I mean? yeah I know. it's like a tablet in the room uh, and, a roomba roomba in the background there and you, you go. got a, a roomba, roomba in the back <laughs> yeah like maybe the roomba is just so effective it cleans up all of dude trash. that's a good roomba it's a monthly subscription service type of thing yeah Oh, um, maybe it's th- one of those cleaner days where it's like street cleaners. You got to clean the floor. It's going to come by like in the city. <laughs> so they had to clean it up. Yeah, maybe so. Um, I'm a big fan of both of these uh, actors and their casting. Yes. I think uh, both of them really embody the character in terms of like Halsey and her persistence and love for what she does and you know bending the rules and doing things you shouldn't do and she knows it like that that face she just made like she knows she's not supposed to do what she does but she doesn't care to a degree because she yeah. truly believes in what she's trying to accomplish i also like that um i'm sorry this character right now on screen doesn't, yeah yes she doesn't say no at times she kind of just did there but she's like like ak who gets the technology first to see the foreign style she said that's Miranda's division. It's not like I know. It's just like, you know what the answer is. Here's the answer again. Stop trying to beat around the bush. Stop trying to like side. I, I think it's like very nice. She She's very stern. And, yes, I, and that's what I yes. like about about that actress. And and, and like uh, Parangoski is just a very calculated and like deliberate individual. So I I, th- I think you really get that in in this episode, and and even in the next episode, it just kind of builds on on that character. I, I really like um, Parangaski's uh, casting. Agreed. Um, here here I like you Dr. have Halsey's casting. Yeah, here you have not Cortana. All right, some people online are like, "What? They made Cortana a human?" I'm like, no, this is a clone of Halsey, and she's no, then gonna grunt. harvest. Come on. Ugh. <laughs> They're going to harvest that brain to then create Cortana. Also, another so, great establishing shot. Bro, High Charity looks so good. All right, here you have the High Prophet of Mercy. And we're introduced to another 
Um, oh, there's the Dreadnought, the key ship in the background. Love it. Um, you're introduced to a, another controversial character that doesn't exist anywhere in the lore. And this is McKee, who's called the Blessed One. Um, and they talk about the Forerunner artifact that they didn't get a magical, but they obviously sense it. Um, there are there's other Forerunner devices that I'm blanking on the name of what they're called. They're like, oh shit. Well, guys, if Orin doesn't name these, he said he owes uh, ten dollars to each subscriber of the podcast. Oh goodness! Get them on um, Twitter. They're like they're not composers, $10. but there's there's devices and um, art, um, artifacts that the foreigners leave behind that can sense other artifacts, and so I think they have a one metal of those. detector of kind. Basically, yeah. Um, but anyway, they call McKee a blessed one. She's a reclaimer, so she can interact with foreigner technology just like John did in the earlier scene. And there's there's a level of respect that that the Prophet of Mercy has for McKee right now, but like McKee's not in any type of like leadership role. She's she's like she's just like a protected individual. She's a VIP. And so the the they keep her around because she's a reclaimer and she can interact with the objects, but it's still very like on a on a leash, if you will, to where the prophets are the the real people behind the covenant. Gotcha. So I uh, I I can't wait to learn more about McKee. I think it's interesting that they went that direction. I'm not really sure how they would do it otherwise. I guess they'd have to introduce a character that ki- that's a considered a reclaimer, so then they can kidnap that character and then use them. Like that, you know. That's that's what they basically did in Halo Two with Miranda Keys and able to activate the Halo Array and stuff for for that game. But anyway, well, dude, I don't if, think we see more. What of her, if the but... chief falls for that girl, dude? What McKee? I don't know that that the uh, the bl- other blessed one. What do you mean the other blessed one? The, the one hashtag, we just saw. The blonde. yeah, the hashtag blessed girl. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. That'd be interesting. I mean, they could go the pretty, you know, generic route of McKee interacting with humans and then being like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't kill you all. You, I'm a human. You're a human. We're all humans. I don't know. I think I think they should keep McKee as a covenant person because it would just help reinforce the fact that they invented this character to... to uh, be with the covenant just to i don't know we'll see what happens this is a rough scene too i was like dang yeah this scene's pretty great and i and i guess it's like we're gonna we're gonna shove this request down your throat if you don't mind after you just uh lost everyone you know and i think miranda keys and and this actress uh, natasha did great great acting i think i think it was really well done of just uh the you know trying to be diplomatic trying to be respective but also just like look like we we're here to help i know there's politics but like your entire village got murdered yo like help us help you yo (laughs) yeah and then kwan's like bitch no like you guys killed everything like and i'm gonna make lies like it's it's great and i think it should it also shows like kwan and just how yes she's a teenager but she's she's just she just doesn't like the unsc because her family doesn't yeah, dude, I, I can't believe this. It just goes like from like, hey, maybe you can help us to being like, oh, I guess if the trash isn't going to serve a purpose, we got to take it out, right? Yeah. Uh huh. It's like yep. so crazy. Oh, it's so crazy. It's so uh like I like the right. I like those type of. I mean, not like those type of people. The uh, people that are very morally ambiguous. I think that's the wording. And that like, okay, then if it doesn't help us, we don't. It's like you're, yeah, but you're talking about a person. You know that, right? It's like, yeah, no, I'm talking a about a person not helping us. Yeah, no, and and I think that's a very uh, that's a core of this show of what it's going to be is is where where are the um, the moral decisions and who who has what in terms of 
kind of how they feel about different things and those types of choices and the ethics. I think there's going to be a lot of those types of conversations. It's some, oh, it's so good. I love the little microfiber filters that you see at the edge of the hologram in those close ups, too. Like yep, you see just a, a little a great, dotting. The great that detail. Like, yeah. Yeah, the all, all the different micro projections and stuff. Yep, looks so good. They said Commander Shepard in the background, yeah. <laughs> That's what you're That's talking all you, about. <laughs> Commander Shepard, yep. I remember you said that in the uh, theater. <laughs> I was like, did they just say Commander Shepard? <laughs> like, just chilly, like, you know, just name drop. It's whatever. That's pretty cool. I wonder if we're going to get, like, a Gears of War reference. Like, like maybe there's a... Uh, I don't know. I even know the Gears Are of they War in the same universe? Names. Gears of War? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Oh, I even noticed those two scientists in the background there with the Spartan. What are they doing? They're just, like, snooping around. Checking out their, uh, their new uh, armor. We have uh, Halsey here at her computer desk. Spotless, we might add. Her, compu her computer table. No fudging of anything anywhere. It'd be funny if they like inserted some like Microsoft branding and it was like a Surface, like a Surface tablet. <laughs> Update to Windows 11 to get the new perspective. <laughs> Windows 52. <laughs> yeah, it's like super... <laughs> surprisingly went back to myspace instead of uh facebook instagram any of them so we're here we have chief kind of discovering his humanity and uh you know halsey trying to keep it a secret i think it's some good moments here And he turns around to tell her, it's asking us for Windows 55 upgrade again. <laughs> Yo, what's your, what's your Netflix password? Did you change the password again? You just have to remember one password across all your accounts. No, sorry. Very pivotal moment, though. Crazy. And, like, we see her already, like, I'll control the situation. It's fine. I can do this. Like, Yeah, she, she again, she is uh, quick to think and I'm just, like, I'm going to oh disregard this, and then I'm going to talk to you softly, very motherly about, you know, this is what you're going through. And then, like, immediately when they hang up on the conversation, she whips around right yeah. here. <laughs> like, update every 10 minutes, like, yada, yada. Like, this is, this is uh, go time. Why does he look like he's about to cry? Because <laughs> he is. <laughs> Forgot the password again, ma'am. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> nice yeah they asked me to do the score at first i said i was a little too busy uh yeah you were unavailable yeah i was helping produce uh what's that show toy story 6 i mean i mean um wow that's pretty cool destiny 3 Oh, dude, no. Destiny 3, we're already done production. I can't wait to get into it. <laughs> we came out with a really cool system where weekly you can pay 10 bucks and it auto-upgrades you to the highest light level. That way you don't have to fucking... You just don't actually have to play. You don't actually have to play, but ever, whenever you do want to log on, you're at the highest light level, all exotics unlocked, all good. I like how clunky he is, though. With, like, how he moves and stuff. Mm hmm And he's also, like, he barely moves, like, just, like, his shoulders or his head. Like, it's always, like, like in and out of, uh, like, if it, it's just, like, he's always, like, <laughs> whole body. If his yeah. hips up was... Very, very physically. Was, very yes. physical. Very, actually, I'd say very mechanical or machine-like. I was just, like... <laughs> Like, oh, oh, the whole upper torso moved to the right. No, I feel you. I, I, I dig it, too. And this is what we were talking about earlier of the, uh, the like, this is what's going to happen. We got to do it. We got to do it type of scenario that we were talking about. 
Yeah, so this is this is when we were met with uh, Captain Keys, um, her father and uh, former lover, with uh, wait what? Oh, <laughs> with Captain Catherine Halsey. Gotcha with Halsey. Okay, her father yeah. and former lover. <laughs> that was a sentence. Sorry, that was a that was a bad pause. I guess. Um, the uh, but yeah, you, you see her trying to do her, I don't know, bio xeno xenology and uh, with her weird looking lab coat. Like, I feel like she should have a better coat to protect her uniform, but whatever. Um, but yeah, you kind of get this keys, and keys is a very like noble man, and and he's a very smart tactician. And I was honestly a little surprised that he was kind of behind this decision, but. I kind of also get it later on when he is instructed to to shoot at the Master Chief, which we'll look out, and he he just takes command. He takes charge and does it. Um, so very honorable. Um, right officer. by the books, checks the boxes, goes with it. And, it, and it, But I think he also sees the bigger picture, whereas Miranda here is still young and and not necessarily naive but she you know her her moral compass is more of just like let's you know keep keep our humans like they're 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 a part of us like we shouldn't treat them differently we should be noble about it whereas he doesn't want Quan to be a liability mm -hmm. and neither and neither does fleetcom and so that's that's why they're you know putting out this order and it's alluded to that they've been putting it out before Yes. Right? This is just our normal so procedure it's, type it, of thing. This, this is, yeah, this isn't, you know, I don't know how rare it might be per se, but it's definitely not uh, the first occurrence. Oh, I, that's the other, real quick, what just happened there too. I think one of my also favorite things, because I've been loving the design of wide shots, their sound use of in space is like, there's no music a lot of the times. It's just silence and a slight, uh, what is that? The Doppler effect where it's like... <laughs> Just a real quick. Yeah, because there's there's no sound in space, but there's like vibrations and stuff, so you can like feel it to a degree, and um, yeah, the sound design is is pretty pretty unique. Well, I mean, I mean, other shows have done that before for for uh, for space, but but yes, I do agree that it's uh, it, it was done pretty effectively. Have I missed other shows that have done it? Yeah, probably. That sounds well. Boring. I know um, the new Star Trek trilogy, the like James. Not James Cameron. What was I going to say? J.J. Abrams. Um, like, he kind of does a similar thing to where his space shots tend to be more, like, hulking and, uh, you know, silent, if you will. Now, this is interesting because I did not know Spartans were deployed for other things besides, you know, fighting the Covenant. Because when I, when you play the game, you know, like, you know. You're dropped into the fight in the first one, and so you've just been fighting. So I never knew, like, according to this TV series, he was used for other stuff or other Spartans were used for different missions and stuff like that before. So it was interesting. Well, Nick, just well, so you know, mm -hmm. the Spartan program actually was developed to end the insurrectionists, and they were oh, instructed snap. to to yeah fight against insurrectionists. So that's why in the opening scene there. When you have them playing cards and he's talking about how like a Spartan is worth a hundred Marines and like they keep killing and killing and killing because they've been killing insurrectionists that have been oh, opposing the UNSC. Oh, this so, makes like, a lot more sense now. They yeah, so they are as much as an enemy to the Covenant. And then in the beginning when Quan's running and and her dad Jen is like, How many UNSC are there? and she replies with, It's not UNSC, it's something else. And she's like, "What? That doesn't make any sense." But they're in the and then so that you have those moments in the beginning of those sequences of them like staring each other down because they don't know if they need to trust the Spartans. Yeah, and I then got the, that. I got that they were like fighting, but I didn't get it. They were originally built for that. That's so interesting. And then, oh, well. because you also have the scene that we're just talking about now, where 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 she says, "I've seen you before, and you've killed you killed my mom," and because uh, she was at this insurrectionist organized event and um because that's that's just what they've done and it, and it's just by pure happy accident that court that the covenant arrive and we have these super soldiers already here 
ready to fight against them. And it's the and it's humanity's best hope, as they say. I love that just miming, just like oh, tinkle, trickle, tinkle, little doing. Yep. All right. What are you peeing? Tinkle, trickle. Like what? Are you, no. What? What, are you talking what, about? what was I trying to say? Tinker, tinker. Tinker. That's what I was trying to say. Tinker, tinker. Tinkle, trickle, trickle. Tinker. Yeah, Master Chief's peeing right there. Can't you tell? So. Again, yeah, look at that. The look, one he's robot peeing. chicken. Have you ever seen Robot Chicken <laughs> making fun of Halo? It's fantastic. Oh yeah, I I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, I think it's a little bit over PG thirteen. I don't know if we could talk about it. Oh, hey, we this is this is an explicit podcast. Oh, he's beautiful. We we we, we swear on this show. Oh, damn! So I just swear and say a bunch of things right now to make up for the video. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, you know you got to be tasteful about I have a it. Point to it. Yeah. I really like this sequence that we're going into right now where the three of them are trying to figure out what's going on. They they react and they, you know, they kill the oxygen in the condor, but then Chief is Chief, so he comes up with a solution. And it's constantly like, like, why did he do this? Like, this is so, like, not protocol. And, like, no one, like, really has an answer. And Halsey's trying to s- save her own skin. And come up with a improvised solution, and Parangoski just doesn't want any of it. Just like you, we have no idea what's. Well, we know have we have every idea of what he's capable of, but like we need to be more careful than what you're late leading on to. I like how the light reflects off his armor at all times too. Like, it looks so well done. What a gentleman. Yeah. So something that does deviate from canon is how much control they have over i guess they have over his suit and it's almost like if you can control the oxygen levels in his suit like couldn't you just control his suit like just like you have armor lock like in the cannon like why can't why can't they just armor lock him to where he's literally a brick and he can't move from where he is right now (laughs) that's so funny to think (laughs) you know just planking on the floors dude (laughs) just like I don't know. I don't know. That's that's. I, I get what they were going because they they kind of have to do something, but I don't. I don't know. I think I I like it, but it's also it kind of raises some other questions. So it's again a little off. But like you get these moments, and it's like, how is he? How is he changing the levels if he's unconscious? It's like, like what is going on? And like I like the way how Parangoski she talks to Halsey like, there too, real quick. I'm like, I think it's, I think it's safe to say we don't know what he's capable of now, Holly. Yes, just shut yes. the fuck up. Like, and, like, and like, <laughs> and just her, her overall demeanor in this situation, like, like she's, she's calm and like processing and rebuttaling, and she, she yep. God, Parangoski's so good. And he's like, we need to, we need to take all these. Like defenses. you said, great casting, great casting with it. Yeah. Ooh, the BRs. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's, I think I audibly, I audibly said that in the theater, was seeing the BRs. I call this the, uh, the like, Star Wars moment. I don't know. I get all these, like, slow zooms, the tilt shifts, and uh, focus racks. Like, I don't know. Th- this whole sequence to me feels very Star Wars y of people running around. You got our guns, you know, aiming up. Your ship's yeah. flying off. Yeah, I got you. This is the Iron Man sequence, dude. Oh, no, I'm joking. So this, this, I just want our listeners to take note of in regards to season two, or not season two, episode two. We'll talk about it next week. Oh, like, I think I know what you're gonna say. It's just like <laughs> I don't know. I love this moment, but it just it just makes me think 
about episode two. Um, so we'll get to that next week. But um, yeah, I I'm also I think I'm a little disappointed with the which how much we get of Silver Team in this episode. Like I get it is a story about Chief and and Blue Team kind of gets sidelined and some and like you know Halo Five and some other things, but um, but I. I kind of wish we saw more of them as like a team. Sorry. What, what are you laughing at? To interrupt you real quick, I'd like to imagine that she was probably trying to use a comm link to talk to them, but they couldn't hear her the whole time. And so they just walk over and at that moment, she's like, are you talking to us? Like, like we were all the way across the bridge. You weren't using a microphone or anything. How are we supposed to hear you? <laughs> just like, she's talking normal while you're not shouting. That is, yeah, that is a little <laughs> awkward. You're right. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. I, I didn't even I didn't even notice that. I just assumed she was on a comm, and I guess she technically is, but that's it, not really conveyed very well. Yeah, like there's not like a headset on her or a mic clearly on her. <laughs> oh, that's so sorry. Wait, Halsey, were you were you talking to us, <laughs> dude? He's gonna get one tapped in the back, assassination style, like Halo Five. Dude, yeah, she just yeah, you just gotta back whack him, you know, like back whack him, just that douche. But I think this is a great scene. Um, I feel like him removing his helmet is necessary for the show. Are you ahead or and something? She hasn't removed his helmet yet. No, no, he hasn't done it yet. But I, I, I want to start talking about it now. Oh, okay. All right. We'll allow it. I mean, okay, spoilers. But, you know, everyone's supposed to know what's already going on. But, like, like I feel like this is, this is I, I, I don't want to say perfect because, like, who knows? There could be a better way to do it. But just like, but like, but like in this moment, like she doesn't trust him, doesn't trust the UNSC. She is scared shitless. She literally still has her friends and her family's blood on her face and all this kind of stuff. And and so for Chief to also being so confused with his own humanity and he's going against orders, like he he wants Quan to trust her, and and and. And he's also confused. Like, I don't know. T- him taking off the helmet makes him, like, physically vulnerable to shooting from the gun, but just also emotionally vulnerable in this scene. And, like, I am 100% for it. Like, I was always concerned about him removing his helmet and, like, what it looks like and putting a face to the Master Chief. But, like, honestly, like, I feel like. It, it it gives me like Spider Man two vibes when Tobey Maguire is stopping the train after fighting Doc Ock and his his mask gets pulled off and at the end of it all like all the subway goers are like it's just a kid like this is Spider Man yeah. and they like all protect him and stuff like that like I don't think it's a, it is as powerful as that scene but I do think there are parallels there yeah. in in this moment and so that that's why I like quote unquote approve of this of this yeah. i feel like they handled it so respectfully and they obviously needed to do it and i feel like they needed to do it in order to tell a very personable hu- master chief finding his humanity you need to have him take his helmet off and and i think they they accomplished it yep it's not I, like I you think- know you do the uh movie of uh Avatar The Last Airbender and make him do 50 moves to bend an element and change a bunch of stuff. It's great, right? That was a really good job. I'm sorry. <laughs> we might have to I also unpack, love their uh, uniforms. I love the uniforms. The uniforms are the uniforms are hot. I think they're they're good. So they're nice and cool. I like the, the marine body armor and like all the yeah, all the pads, all good. the pouches, like the costuming and uh I I think maybe a little bit of um props could be uh, contributed to to the overall design is very effective. I think they said there there was a company in Europe that made them for them that made all the different armor stuff, and they have people running in between shots to like fix stuff that they needed to. It was really cool. Yeah, to hear about. and yeah, one of the interviews they said that yes, yeah, I don't know what the name of the co- the the, the uh, company was, but yeah, there is a like phase FX or something like that. It was very quick. Yeah. So yeah, they they built all the armors. I don't know if how much they did of the marine armors, but it's uh Also, this is a lot of people, you know. Well, it's it's Fleetcom. This is this is like I mean, technically Fleetcom in in, in the in the core canon Fleetcom is in Australia. 
but I guess Earth's not in this timeline. So you have Reach, and so this is like this is their this is the Pentagon, you know. This is oh, uh, okay, right. Hey yo, this moment, this moment here where he's like shoot her, shoot him down, and then Keeb is like, "This is keys, shoot it down." Just right like, away, yeah, it's so just, good. Just like taking the moment commands, he was given the order, it's like it's like, with pleasure. like it's our he and he even said, you know, he's like, "Ma'am, like, are you sure you want to like shoot on our biggest asset, like in our entire?" In the entirety of the UNES, UNSC, Master Chief is our biggest asset. Like, are you sure? And she's like, yes. Like, like man, like that whole like table scene with the three of them, I just, I'm a, I'm a big fan for. Also, it's nice to know that those chairs have like the automation to move in and out more. So if you're not comfortable enough, because he moved that chair backwards to get out, which was beautiful. <laughs> Ding. Beautiful. And I could look at Perangoski all day. Yeah, I also like that she looked over like, are you going to interfere with this? I swear to God, I'm going to have to drop you too, dude. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, he knows, like, Halsey, you get in the way, I'm going to drop you, dude. I'm curious of, like, what would have happened in this moment if the artifact the... didn't power the ship. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the Spartans are... You know, they're going to go with Halsey because they all consider Halsey to be like a mom. And Halsey was like, protect the Master Chief. And there's all these freaking Marines here. Like, I, I'm i curious, like, what would have happened? Yeah, I was like, I right here, like, I thought they were about to just, like, start, like, firing on their own men. I was like, oh, God, this is going to get crazy. It's a cool shot. I like that one. Going through a lot the hologram of good on the I think their, their lighting is used very effectively throughout this, whether it be even in the uh, the lighting of their wide shots that are huge CGI-wise for establishing, or these scene stuff. Like, oh, it's so good. Such a good use of the Halo theme, too. It's very yes. good use. Very tasteful. Oh. And then it, and it just leads into the... Then when he drives, when he flies up, and, like, yeah, it's... Uh, I love Halsey here, too. Like, Halsey's, like, like borderline, oh, like, yeah. amazed. <laughs> My baby, well, she's, outsmarting like, everyone. That, that, but also she's like, oh, but that artifact. Like, what? Like, she's... She, like, like, Halsey is, like, freaking... Like, not like only a... does my prize possession get out of this, but I just learned he's carrying now an artifact that's going to be amazing. Yes, like, she she lives for Covenant technology, and she, like, is so amazing. Like, like, she's, like, incredible is, like, her reaction for that last shot because of just, like, not only did he get away, but just that, like, whatever John has on that thing powered that whole condor. Like, like yep. Like, Wow. Finding so. out you're going to get fired and then you got paid for the month in advance and a bonus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. That's episode one. Man, that was fun. I'm going to like this going on, going forward. What a what a ride, ladies and gentlemen. What a ride. Um, So I really liked this episode. I don't think it was perfect. I accept a lot of the changes that they've made i'm i'm for it and i think most of my gripes is like for this episode is how the storytelling or nitpicks and stuff but like how it is just like grounded in a television episode like like it's from that angle as at which that like i may not like certain things as opposed to changes or implementations and and how they convey different aspects of the actual lore. Like, I'm more accepting of those things in this episode to where I, my my gripes I would have with any show, if, it, if this wasn't a Halo show and it was just a TV show, I feel like my gripes would be more or less the same. Like, the minigun, you know, chaining people down. Or like, uh, I don't know, some of the other examples we talked about during this episode. But like, 
I feel like a lot of the stuff that was changed, I'm I'm pretty okay with, and I'm I'm for, and we'll learn more about but it. it. And it's also that we had to pick on something like the minigun, like that was how specific it was, and everything else we were good with. Like that, that's yeah. great. That's great. It's that that's how small the problem was that it never bled over into other stuff either. Very true. All right, Nick, is there are there any other notes you want to make about the episode? Like any any other takeaways that you want to discuss? No, I think it was just well done. It was well paced throughout there. Um and I like that we kind of found our big problem towards the like last third of it, which is like what's going on with the chief. Like I like that a lot. Big problem. You mean like like the core of the like the conflict? Pro- yeah, like it's, problem, or it's about like- learning about ourselves and like what we'll do for each other. Feels like the core of it. Yeah, that that kind of journey of like Chief finding his humanity and like questioning who he is as an individual, who he is as a soldier, where his moral compass is, and all, you know, all those questions came up in like the last third of the episode, and that's what's going to propel. The rest of the season is that is that's the journey we are now embarking on no i uh, i agree i i really like the episode i think it's a very strong um beginning and uh you know we'll see how it continues you know i can't wait to talk about episode two and and i can't wait to see episode three. Oh man yeah all right. Well, thank you, Nick, for joining me. And thank you to the listeners for joining us for another week of Halo TV+. Plus. Halo, the series premieres exclusively on Paramount Plus every Thursday. I think it's like midnight Thursday Pacific time. I'm not 100% sure, but... I think it was it was out when, when, uh, when we were chilling that late night. It was out when we were up. So I want to say yes, but... You know, yeah. I also like see things every now and then, you know, signs from the beyond. But um, it's not like we all have to wait at nine o'clock at night for the episode to drop. But I'm, you know, I need to go to work in the morning. So I'll probably watch them Thursday nights. True Halo fans would stay up, Orin. You know what? If I was living on the on the Pacific Coast or in Hawaii, I probably would. But I don't want to wait up till three in the morning to watch Halo when I work in the morning. Tell him the chief that, dude. Yeah, you go tell the chief that. I will tell the chief that. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode to all of Evolved's shows on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. It also features links to our Discord server, Patreon page, Xbox Live Club, and other contact information. Once again, another shout out to all of our patrons for supporting Evolved and making all of this possible. Head over to Patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolved to learn more. And finally, if you want to leave us an email or a voicemail about this week's episode of Halo, you can email us at podcastevolved.com. I, it's actually not true. I forgot to update this. It's um, podcastevolved at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call at 205-EVOLVED, which is 205-386-5833. And with that, I've been your host, Orn. And until next time, Evolve! Evolve!